Mr. Grassley. No. Mr. Grassley, no. Mr. Hatch. No. Mr. Hatch, no. Miss Snow. Miss Snow, aye. It includes ideas from both Democrats and Republicans, which is why it enjoys the support of people from both parties. And I want to particularly thank Senator Olympia Snow for both the political courage and the seriousness of purpose that she's demonstrated throughout this process. Senator Olympia Snow getting a lot of attention today. The Republican from Maine, she voted aye. 14 to 9, the Senate Finance Committee bill passed the committee. Now it'll be melded with another bill in the Senate, and the process moves on from here. What about health care reform and where we stand today? Let's bring in our panel. Mort Kondracki, executive editor of Roll Call. Nina Easton, Washington bureau chief of Fortune magazine. And syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Charles, you heard the president. Your thoughts on today? Um, slightly inaccurate. He said it enjoys the support of persons, of, of people from both parties. In fact, it enjoys the support of at least one person from each party. He's got one Republican, Olympia Snow, and I credit her. I think she's, uh, she is not a cynical uh, person. She's extremely serious and sincere, and she actually has read the damn bill and they came to a conclusion that on balance it's, it's better than the than the status quo. However, she made it very, very clear that she goes along with this, but she is quite unlikely to go along with the next diversions. Remember, this is going to have to be merged with the bill coming out of the Senate Health C Committee, which is to its left. For example, it includes a public option, which she opposes, and she will vote no if a public option is included. And even after that, it's going to have to be melded with a House bill, which will be way out there in left field, and she won't support that. So if the president touting her support now is evidence of how much he reaches across the aisle, he's going to be stung when, when she goes the other way at crunch time. To that point, let's listen in to Senator Snow and also Senator Nelson. I think we have to move in the other direction, away from a public option. I don't support a public option. I won't support a public option. When we get to the floor, uh, we're going to try to get that public option, and we're going to try to tighten up some of those subsidies and those penalties that you're all concerned about. But at least this is the first step. Well, the first step there, Nina, you hear Senator Nelson kind of lifting the curtain a little bit that the public option, the government-run option, is going to be rolled out on the Senate floor, according to the Democrats. We've known that, but they're talking about it now. And public option is still very much alive in the minds of a lot of uh, Democrats, both in the Senate and the House. So the remarkable thing about the Senate Finance Committee vote today was how it didn't move the ball forward either on a bipartisan bill, because as Charles mentioned, you had a very tentative Republican senator. She said, my vote today is my vote today. She was not, she was, she's not committed to following this process through. Um, and secondly, the public option, we also had Chuck Schumer saying today uh, from the committee saying, look, I still want a public option. And Rockefeller said the same and thing. Rock so you still got this split. This has done nothing to solve that split, even within the Democratic Party, let alone trying to get Republicans on board. They still haven't solved that split. The other thing to, to, for people to watch is that the um, liberal groups now are sending out an ad campaign uh, uh, promoting a public option because they say this new health insurance industry study that shows premiums will increase. They're using that as an excuse to say, well, these these you know these bad insurance companies actually need competition. We need a public option. So you're going to see more commercials, advertising going up this week and next week, pushing this public option. Look, if it, White House <laughs> Press Secretary Robert Gibbs was asked, yeah. which is more important, bipartisan support or a public option, a government-run op option? And he didn't really answer it today. Well, the administration hasn't answered that question. Right. Look, <clears throat> the administration is going to have to get in here and make this bill passable. And uh, it's going to have to not have a public option. You're going to have to buy off the liberals with, with something else, uh, either a millionaire's tax or something to pay for it. But uh, the public option simply won't get 60 votes in the Senate. You can't get Ben Nelson for it. You can't probably get uh, Evan Bayh for it, Democrats. Although so, he's having a meeting at the White House individually. Well, well, I think that what Obama's got to do is fashion a bill that doesn't have a public option, but that gives some sort of cover to the liberals that they can say that they got something, maybe more restrictions on, on insurance companies or something like that. But they thought this, this insurance exchange was going to be that cover, and it's proved not. It proved that the d Democrats who want a public option weren't satisfied by it. They're not going to be. It's hard to see something short of a public option that's going to satisfy them. Here's the question I asked Britt, Charles. Did the fact that the mandate 
uh, the, the penalty for not getting insurance, it was pretty stiff at the beginning. The Senate Finance Committee lowered that before they passed this bill. Did that change breathe new life into a government-run option among the views of senators? I think it does, but of course it makes no sense because if the reason that insurance rates are going to have to go up is because if you don't have a strong mandate, you're not going to have a revenue stream out of the young and the healthy, well then the insurance companies either have to raise rates or they must. So having a government option as an alternative with lower rates would simply you mean that the government option, the government plan, would be heavily subsidized and would essentially be a government takeover immediately of the whole industry. And I don't think that's really hard to understand or explain so that I think once it is explained, it would be a non-starter. You've got to have a strong individual mandate or you cannot have the expansion of coverage that is proposed in all of these bills. So Mort, now we go behind closed doors. This melding of the Senate bills, the House bills come together. We have a long way to go. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the president wants to, wants to sign a bill by Christmas. If he's gonna sign a bill by Christmas, uh, he's gonna ha I, I say, he's gonna have to get in there himself or Rahm Emanuel for him, but calling back all the time and fashion this bill himself. To ha the gap is so wide between the two Senate bills and then the House bill. Somebody's gotta bridge, bridge it together and it can only be the leader, the leader, and that's gotta be the president. And last word, Nina, you think the Senate version, when they put the put two bills together, does not have a government run option? Well, you can't get it through the Senate with a government run Even option. a trigger that yeah. says if it's not working, yeah. the public option is triggered. But again, the public option advocates opposed that, so it's hard to see where that's going to go. All right, we are where we are. We'll take a look at politics next with big gubernatorial races in two states. We'll find out what it all means when we come back.